Everybody says that Lightburn is the perfect software for laser engraving. Therefore, I spent four hours speed running it to see what's all the fuss about. Here we go. Download the Lightburn software from the official web page and choose a suitable version accordingly to your machines and computer. If all goes to plan, the software should guide you to this page. You might notice some settings are missing or different on your setup. This could mean three things. Some features are unavailable or integrated into your machine's control board itself. The version of your Lightburn is not the same as mine. Click on the window tab on the top left. Some checks could be missing. Then adjust your laser focus lens and other needed preparations. If you have questions, you can check out the video linked in the description. For photo engraving, we will need a photo first. Lightburn will accept the following file formats. Before importing the photo, we suggest removing the background of it. This step is personal preference and not necessary. On the top left, left click on Files and Find Import. Select the photo you have prepared. The photo should show up on your grid and the layer should also appear on the upper right, like this. For moving around the grid, either holding down space and left clicking the mouse to drag or holding down the scroll wheel and drag zooming in and out with the mouse scroll wheel to cut after engraving here's how on the left left click either the rectangle or the circle to enter creating mode now you have two options simply drag and create a shape or hold down shift and drag to create a shape with the same ratio up to you Upon creating the shape, on the right side of the screen should pop up another layer. More on that later. Now, left-clicking on the cursor on the left to enter select mode. Click on the shape and adjust it to your liking. To fit your photo perfectly, do this. In select mode, while holding down control, select the shape first, then the photo. Go to the top and click on these buttons. They will make your shape the same width hide and center the shape to your photo. Once you find the photo size to your liking, first left click on the photo if it's not already selected, then right click and select adjust images and a menu should pop up like this. This is where you will adjust the photo setting. On the left is the original photo and on the right is the laser version. Here you can find these settings. Let's go over them each. In the layer settings, image mode decides the mode you want the photo to be engraved. Different mode has different representations and are suited for different kinds of images. You can see here that with each mode, the software shows a sample and a brief explanations. We suggest Ducky and Jarvis for photo engraving. Line interval. The settings means that the gap between each engraving. As you can see on the screen, a higher value will make your results look like something from a retro game. Lowering this value will make your engraving more detailed. But bear in mind that it can't go too low than your laser's been with. Otherwise, you will burn the overlapping twice. DPI, this settings is linked with your line to roll settings and usually requires no adjustments. In the image setting, we have contrast, brightness and gamma. This settings brights up your engraving results. As you can see on the right, you can use these settings to remove some unwanted noise or shading in the photo's background. Once you have found the settings to your liking, let's move on. On the right side of the menu, we have Enhanced Radius and Enhanced Amount. In short, these two settings sharpens your engraving results. Some adjustments here could really make your engraving pop. However, if tweak too much, you will lose some details. Once these are done, let's move on to the next part. On the upper right, you should be able to see two layers, one for the image and one for the shape. The laser process each layer from top to bottom. We suggest engraving first and cutting later, so the image layer should be on top. If not, holding down left click to move it around. 
Now let's double left click the image layer to go over some laser settings. Speed, max, and minimum power should be your main focus here. Depending on your laser machine, these settings will be different for everyone, every machine, and for every project. We suggest high speed and low power for your first engraving. If the engraving turned out to be rather light, you can run it with another pass. As for air assist, we suggest leaving that on. Another thing is the scan angle. It changes your laser head's overall scan direction. In some cases, a different angle might bring a different effect and style to engraving. But the default zero is fine for most. Now with the image layer done, let's move on to the cutout settings. Before all, make sure it's set to line as we only want to cut here. Then double left clicking on this layer. For cutting, you might want a slower speed and higher power if the material didn't cut through the first pass. You can always do a second one. Then you're all done. Double check all the settings again and click preview on the top here. In here, you can see the preview of how the laser will engrave. On screen, there are two colors, black and red overlapping with each other. Black is where the laser turns on for engraving. Red is where the laser shuts down and moves to the next session. Always preview the result before sending it to your laser. In preview, the result might look awful, but if you zoom in on the preview, you can see the dots and lines. Also, you can see the estimated time for engraving. Pretty neat. If everything is to your liking, you can send the design to the machine and voila, photo engraved. Trial and error is the name of the game here. Be patient and adjust the settings every time. Eventually, your engraving will turn out beautifully and make a precious keepsake. Happy engraving! Can't help but notice that you're not coming back, which is disappointing.